Hello, stats students. Welcome to section 4.2. Let's talk about addition rules of probability. Now that you know what um, probability is, the three types, how to make a tree diagram, how to make a sample space, let's talk about some different ways to see and start doing some addition rules. So if we're going to create a de Venn diagram for selecting a senior at Marine City High who's taking stats, let's start with this big box right here is all of Marine City High. I'm going to draw a bubble because that's what Venn diagrams have. This bubble is seniors. I'm going to draw another bubble that is stats. Do these two things happen at the same time? Can you have, can you have a senior who's taking stats? So since the answer is yes, that means I've got to overlap these bubbles. Because I do have seniors who are taking stats, those people would be in the overlapping part. But I have seniors who are not taking stats. They would be out here in the rest of the bubbles, bubble. And I have stats students who are not seniors, so they would be in that part of the bubble. So that Venn diagram illustrates how those compound events, how those two things can happen at the same time, or there's an overlapping section for them. So mutually exclusive events are not what we just drew. These are events that cannot occur at the same time. There are no outcomes in common, just can't happen, and they're called disjoint events or disjointed events. For example, if we're just keeping it super simple, if we roll a die, we cannot get a four and a six at the same time. It just cannot happen. So they are mutually exclusive. So if I ask you the questions down below, are the events mutually exclusive, you got to think it out. Yes or no is kind of a tricky way to answer, so I always say mutually exclusive or not mutually exclusive. So letter A, it says if we're going to roll two dice, and event A is rolling a sum of seven, and event B is getting doubles, can those two things happen at the same time? Are any doubles that you get add up to seven? can't happen, right? So those two things cannot happen at the same time, therefore they are mutually exclusive. Event B, or letter B, says we're going to select any registered voter. I think if I change this to a registered Democrat is event A, and a registered Republican is event B, I'm not sure if you know, when you go and you register to vote, you can, if you choose, decide if you want to register as a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent or you don't want to affiliate with any um, party at all. But if somebody has already registered as a Democrat, could they also register as a Republican? Cannot happen. Those two things are mutually exclusive in the eyes of the Secretary of State. I don't want to get into any political conversations. How about if we draw a card from a deck of cards? Can we select a, play, a face card, so king, queen, jack, for event A, and at the same time select a heart for event B? Do we have any face cards that are hearts? We do, right? So those two things can happen at the same time, so they are not mutually exclusive. I highly recommend just writing it this way because it just makes more sense instead of trying to say yes or no. And let's see, letter D, could we select a senior at Marine City High who is a stats student? Can it happen at the same time? It can, right? So since we have seniors who are stats students, those two things are not mutually exclusive. How about selecting a freshman at Marine City High who's a stats student? At this point, I don't have any statistics students who are freshmen. I mean, it could happen in the future, but they would not be overlapping. My freshman bubble and my stats bubble would not overlap. Those are mutually exclusive events. All right, so that's just looking at them and deciding because now we're going to roll into addition rules and there's one rule for mutually exclusive and there's one rule for not mutually exclusive. Notice the bubbles, the Venn diagram here for mutually exclusive, are not overlapping. We've got the probability of event A on the left, the probability of event B on the right. 
Notice the probability of this sample space is one. It's always one whole. And here's how this goes. If I ask you about the probability of A happening or B happening, so those two things happening, and they're not mutually, so me choosing a freshman or a statistics student, I just take the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event. I add them together. If we're going to be all technical about this, we've got a symbol here. This little U-shaped thing you might have seen in other math classes, this means union, and it implies or. So the probability of A in union with B, or A or B, is equal to the probability of both of those added up. Please make yourself a note somewhere up here at the top, or tells you to add. That's a really big deal. If you are going to add sometime along the way, so if we look at this practice 10, at a convention there's seven math instructors, five computer science, three stats, and four science instructors. None of them teach in more than one discipline. This right here, this statement says these guys are mutually exclusive. None of these professors are teaching in more than one content area. So that's telling me, without telling me, that I just need to add the two probabilities. So if an instructor is selected, find the probability of selecting a science instructor or a statistics instructor. So right here is our math problem. So we want to find the probability of science or the probability of stats. Notice it's got an or in the middle, right? Or implies and. So, probability of a science instructor. It looks to me like plain old science. There's four of them. Favorable over possible? Well, there are 19 instructors at this convention. Probability of a stats instructor? It looks to me like there are three of them out of the 19. So that means that 7 out of 19 is my probability of choosing either a science or a stats instructor. Now you might have common sensed your way out through it and just said 3 plus 4 is 7 out of 19, but you added, right? So it's still an add problem. It doesn't change. It just depends on if you're being technical about how you write out your problem or if you're just whipping through it and doing the adding. But you add one way or the other. So don't lose that part of it. All right, so that's easy. So now we've got addition rule two, probability of two events that are not necessarily mutually exclusive. So look at the Venn diagram, right? We've got this overlapping part. Notice that right here, this wedge, it's not really a wedge, is the probability of both things happening. So the rule is the probability of A or B, still the same beginning, so I either want A or B to happen, is the probability of bubble A plus the probability of bubble B minus that overlapping shaded in between A and B. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Let me put the fancy language up here. We've got our union right here, the probability of A in union with B, and then we've also got probability of A plus the probability of B is equal to, this is intersection, and it tells you and. So it's just fancy math language. Now, if for some reason you were not 100% sure that these are not mutually exclusive, even if they are and you subtracted the overlap, if they were mutually exclusive events and there was no overlap, you'd subtract zero and it wouldn't make a difference, right? So it really doesn't matter if you're looking for that overlap and you subtract it. Well, it wouldn't be the end of the world. So why is the intersection subtracted? Because if you took the whole probability of A and B and added them, you would count that probability of A in one bubble, but you'd repeat those in the other bubble. So the probability of A and B would be counted 
in the probability of A, but also in the probability of B. So it would end up being double counted, and that's a problem, right? That's going to mess up our math if we're counting things more than once. Just like the probability of seniors who are stats, students, well, I could count all the seniors, I could count all the stat, stat students, but I would have some people who got counted in both of those lists. I need to take them out of there in some way in order to account for the fact that they are both in both bubbles. So this is a lovely uplifting topic. There's a study of 300 patients. It's a table, and I'm going to ask you to make a table too, but if there's 100 alcoholic pa patients, 87 had elevated cholesterol, 200 non-alcoholic, 43 had elevated cholesterol. And the results are in the table. So in part A, it says to find the probability of an alcoholic with elevated cholesterol. Well, this seems like an easy one to find, right? Alcoholic with elevated cholesterol. Everybody agreeing with me for an 87? Out of what's our sample size or our uh, possible 300? Probability of a non-alcoholic. This one seems easy. We just have to look in a different spot. Non-alcoholic goes across to here, so 200 out of the possible 300. Part C, the probability of an alcoholic or with elevated cholesterol. We could do this a couple ways. I'm going to do this the technical way, right? Because we could say it's an or, so we know we need to and to, uh, sorry, we know we need to add, but we need to take out the overlap. So I'm going to do the probability of alcoholic plus the probability of elevated cholesterol, and I'm going to subtract the both, uh, the overlap for those. So the probability of alcoholic. Well, alcoholics, I'm going to highlight here, there's 100 of them, correct? So 100 out of 300. The probability of elevated cholesterol. There's 130 of them. So I'm going to add because that's what OR tells me to do. But do you notice when I highlighted this section right here, the 87 got double highlighted. It got doubled across the, or got counted across the alcoholic row, and then it got um, counted down the elevated cholesterol column. So I'm going to subtract those 87 out of 300 that got counted twice, and then I'm going to do myself a math problem, and I am going to say that that ends up being, I believe it's 143 out of 300. You might have found the same thing a different way, but that's the go-to way, probability of A plus probability of B minus the probability of the overlap. All right, let's make a Venn diagram and a much more uplifting topic about pizza. So we are going to create a Venn diagram, and we're talking about um, customers selecting a pizza with mushroom or pepperoni. Notice the word or is 0.55. We've already subtracted out the overlap. The probability that the customer selects only mushrooms is 0.32. If the probability that they select only pepperoni is 0.17, find the probability of them selecting both. So start with a whole diagram, Venn diagram. We're going to make a bubble for mushrooms. We're going to make an overlapping bubble for pepperoni. The question is asking what this part right here is. So it says, we know that the mushrooms or pepperoni is 0.55. So quick question, if they just order pizza out here with any toppings, how much is left in this outside floating if we know that 0.55 is between mushrooms and pepperoni? So any other toppings would be 0.45. I'm going to ask you to label all the areas. Um, let's see. It says we need to stow this 0.55 away for just a moment. It says the probability that the customer selects only mushrooms is 0.32. So, right, only mushrooms would be in the mushroom bubble, not in the overlap, because it's only mushrooms. 
the probability that they select only pepperoni is 0.17. So only pepperoni would be on this side, not including the overlap. So we need to figure out how much is in that overlapping mushroom or pepperoni. So we know that probability adds up to 1, right? We learned that the other day. And we know that both of these bubbles add up to 0.55. So 0 0.32 plus 0 0.17 comes out to what? A 0.49. But I know that it's 0.55 for any topping. So how much is left for that overlapping? I believe it would be 0 0.06. If we added 0 0.32, 0 0.06, 0 0.17, and 0.45, we should get 100% of our pizza has some kind of topping on it. You got to kind of think those ones through. So let's do a little quick one here. So create a Venn diagram. So the probability of bubble A, all of bubble A, is 0.36. The probability of bubble B is 0.42. And the probability of A and B is 0.16. This is and, which means it's the overlap. So I can put that 0.16 right in there. If all of bubble A is 0.36, but I just used 0.16 for this overlapping area, do you see how that's going to have to be a 0 0.20? So this is going to be 0.36 minus, oops, 0.36 minus 0.16. If all of bubble B is 0.42, we're going to have to subtract out that 0.16, and that's going to end up being, what, 6.26? Now here's the thing, something to think about. I want you to figure out how much is left for out here for the outside, not in bubble A or bubble B. So think about that. So that's what I was going for when I said don't forget to label all areas. You have to label the outside all as well. And here's your big clue to help you figure that out. So ask me about that. Let's make sure you've got it. And I have one more thing to talk about, which is making a table. So I'm all about these stats classes, right? In MCHS stats classes, there's five juniors and 45 seniors. 18 seniors are females and three juniors are male. Find the probability of a junior or a female. So I got to make myself a table kind of like that cholesterol, elevated cholesterol thing. So I'm going to do juniors and seniors. You might set this up different, but you'll still have the same basic thing. I'm going to have males and females. So let's fill in what we know. There's five juniors. Oh, wait, I should add another column, right? Total. Total. So there are five juniors, there are 45 seniors, 18 seniors are females, so 18 seniors are females, would you agree that that has to go right here? Three juniors are males, find the probability of a junior or a female. So do you feel like you could fill in the rest of the chart now that we got it set up? How many junior females do they have to be? Two, right? Because they have to add up to five. How many um, senior males do there have to be? I believe my math is right. That's going to be like 27. So we've got 30 males in the class and 20 females. So a junior or a female means that I'm going to take my probability of a junior plus the probability of a female and subtract the probability of a junior and a female. Or you might figure this out a different way. So juniors, let's see, there's five out of how many students? Females, there's 20 out of 50 students. 
and female juniors would be minus two out of the 50 students. So that's going to be something like 23 out of 50 or 46 percent. You might have figured that out once you had your table a different way, but that table is really helpful to make sure that you know um, what's going on. Use that as a guide as we work through other problems. That is it for section 4-2, and I hope you're having more fun now that we get to figure out some probabilities. I'll see you next time.